Uh, good evening, folks. I just wanted to uh, talk to you briefly about uh, a little bit of information on fishing licenses in Florida, uh, some of the struggles you may incur, or some of the little hidden things that people don't understand. Now, this is whether you're a Florida resident or a uh, non-resident. Uh, just some, I'm, a, I'm not going to hit on everything. Uh, right here is some of the, it's a free thing from the state of Florida. Tells you all the fees, uh, who's exempt, and things of that nature. But I'm just going to touch on the basic. I'm not going to sit here and just read read a book to you. But I'm just going to tell you some of the things. So this is basically what the old license would look like if you went to a, uh, a retailer and sold that. It's a really nice uh, tear-proof, waterproof, uh, you know, license. And and the uh, now, like for two weeks, I kept trying to to renew it, and the um, the retailer I was going to kept telling me, "Oh, there's a problem with the system, state of Florida, it's something to do with the firewall, blah blah blah." Anyway, so I was just, you know, so I was patient. You know, I went back a couple of times, and after two weeks, I'm like, you know, this is BS because the state of Florida is not going to want to lose money. You know, if they would have figured it out probably within 48 hours minimum. So I fast forward, I go down the road today because because it, it was my uh, license about to expire in a couple of days. So I go down to Walmart and that's the last place I usually like to go because you have so many new employees or clerks that, you know, could be in, you know, packing meat one day or whatever. You know, nobody's going to know. I shouldn't say nobody. I, 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 let me back up. That sounds kind of negative. I will tell you about a good experience I had today at Walmart. Uh, so I go there and the lady was doing something she happened to be right near that department right on the dividing line she sounded like she was pretty experienced so she went over there so she had a little bit of struggles but I did get my fishing license but the one thing uh, that was different this year was rather than being on that little waterproof tear proof paper that I showed you it was just printed on a, a like a copier sheet of paper so I'm thinking oh hell that's you know, I didn't complain. I, mean, I was just glad to be legal. So there's a couple of things I want to let you know about that. They were, they have a section you can cut out and laminate and everything. That well, that can. Uh, it's another expense, you know. So then the um, the uh, the other suggestion I would have for you is uh, at the top of your license, there's gonna be a customer ID number, and that's that's once you're you're in the system, that's for, to the day you die, that's gonna be your customer ID number. So my license is about to expire in a couple days. I'm going to keep that in my little uh, like wallet type thing. And even though it's expired, the paper one, I'm going to keep it out of the elements. <clears throat> and I'm not going to laminate. I'm not spending five bucks to laminate something. You know? So I just, I'm going to keep that in my van with my vehicle registration and such. So anyway, so that, that's one quick thing I was going to uh, tell you about so um, the license I got today it's a saltwater free shoreline license but you still have to be registered by you know big brother so then <clears throat> some of the other options are uh, I'm just gonna hit on some of the basics there's some long-term ones I you know I might touch on a couple of those real quick but um, if, if you're in the state of Florida and you're in a watercraft of any sort, if you're wading in the water or anything like that, you need a fishing license. If you're fishing from the beach, let me back up. When I say you, if you're in a watercraft, you need a paid fishing license. So now I'm going to back up. If you're fishing from the beach, not wading in the water, they have a free license for Florida residents only called a free shoreline license. So that's good. Free sounds good, right? <clears throat> well, the reason I didn't, I waited two weeks to get this license because if you do it online, they charge you a convenience fee, which is basically, I forget the exact amount, but it's like right around $4.50. So to me, it's, you know, free is not really free. They, they subtitle uh, <clears throat> the charge uh, convenience fee. So yeah, I, I was in convenience for two weeks trying to get a free license. So, uh, so that's that. So in, if you're a Florida resident, 
and you just strictly want to pay saltwater license and you go to a retailer like Walmart, now I'm talking about the paid license where you're in a watercraft. The, uh, the, the fee for that is $17, but the retailer, they, 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 their cut is 50 cents for the transaction. So you're going to pay seventeen fifty. So uh, if you wanted to get a freshwater license, same thing would apply. There is no shoreline license pertaining to freshwater fishing. It's, it's a paid license wherever you're fishing in Florida. And that is also $17 plus the 50 cents for the retailer. If you wanted to buy a joint combination as a Florida resident, it would be $33. So that covers that. Now where, where it gets really expensive and um, uh, I guess a burden to non-residents is a, a non-resident three-day saltwater license is $17. If you're at this retail or whatever it is, it's going to be $17.50. That's for three days. A seven-day license is going to be $30. And you tack on the uh, 50 cent charge. So anyway, the annual license for a non-resident fishing in Florida is $47 plus the 50 cent fee the retailer is going to get. So it's $47.50. So now, when I sold these fishing licenses for many, many years, people always come in like, oh, you know, I own property. I live in, you know, Wisconsin or whatever, but I own a house here and I pay taxes here. It, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I understand your your desire to save money, but it state of Florida does not recognize that. You have to have a Florida driver's license. And um, so once you have a Florida driver's license, you, you do qualify for all the benefits of uh, in-state residency. Uh, a couple of the other things. That, there's a couple other like little uh, additional permits you can get like a snook permit in the old days it used to be two dollars and fifty cents you know because fifty cents would go to the retailer now it's ten dollars so it's going to be ten dollars and fifty cents um, and you can do a long-term purchase like a five-year purchase for like fifty dollars plus the fees and, and um, but seeing what i've seen in the past i wouldn't recommend anybody getting a long-term um, snook stamp because when we had a real cold spell many years ago, a lot of snook died, they closed the season, and when we had red tide, so um, the best thing to do with that is just, just buy that annually. Uh, you, you're not gonna, you don't wanna spend $50 for a snook stamp and you know only be able to use it one year or something like that. <clears throat> but on, on the same token, on the East Coast, if you were living on the West Coast like I am, you could go to the East Coast and utilize that, but you know, it's all depends what part of Florida you're living in. So that's that's one example. Um, here's the other thing that really sucks. Um, I feel really bad. If, if, if I'm like 99 years old and fought in two world wars and I'm coming in to the retailer to buy a non-resident fishing license, you still got to pay. I don't agree with that, but this is an informative video. I'm not here to express you know, political views, but I think you kind of feel how I feel. But so yeah, it sucks. Uh, you know, military veteran who's in his 90s just wants to fish for a while, you know, whatever, and you know, you got to pay. Unfortunately, that's Florida's rule. That's not my rule. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, so that's some of the basics. Um, I will tell you, uh, this is kind of weird. This is uh, one thing I wanted to, um, there's fees for, you, you can get a really good deal if you want to buy, buy long-term. So like if you're a, um, if, if you want to buy a, a lifetime fishing membership for your child who's between zero to four years old, it's going to cost $126.50, and then there's going to be the, the retailer's fee. So basically, it's going to be $127 is what you're going to pay for your child. Now, this is where it gets crazy because you would think the older you get 
and you're closer to death, the cheaper it would get. So now, the next bracket here for a lifetime membership is ages 5 to 12. Well, now the fee goes up to 226.50 plus the retailer, his little cut is 50. So now you're 227. Okay, if you're 13 years or older, now the lifetime membership is 301.50 plus the 50 cents. So, and then they have different, uh, they call them a lifetime gold sportsman membership. It includes some of the uh, hunting and things of that nature. But that's basically all I wanted to share with you is uh, when you come down here, you know, our slogan on this channel is know your legal limits. So you can go to any uh, retailer that sells fishing licenses. This is the saltwater manual. This is the freshwater manual. This is annually. And this is updated every six months. So when they update this, the, like say for the salt water, the new the new regulations go into effect January first and July first. So right now they're working on new regulations. Whatever you know, it could be a change of you know snapper size or how many sheep's head or whatever you you know. But those, so you have to be very aware. So if you're fishing, you know. July 4th weekend or something like that and you have old regulations in your box you, you kind of really should try and be uh, proactive and get the new regulations they usually ship them out uh, lately the state of Florida hasn't really shipped them out on time they will get to most retailers in uh, like July but you would think the old days they used to ship them out in June so people would be ready to have them but uh, then the other thing is uh, when I'm talking about retailer, you can also go to the uh, tax collector and they, they can do the fishing license for you. And um, But the, the, those places tend to be pretty backed up. But um, it's kind of getting harder and harder to find <clears throat> like a bait and shop retailer that will, will do do the fishing licenses because it's, you know, it's just a pain in their backside to do all this stuff. If there's four people there, and they got to, you know, it takes a while. They got to ask all these questions. If you never had a fishing license, it's a long process. And then it seems like for other, whatever reason, the state of Florida, after you do four or three or four or whatever, they sometimes you'll get a prompt on the screen that tells you to call this 888 number and then you call that. And then everything you've already inputted into the screen, they're going to ask you the same questions that you've just put in the, the monitor there, you know, the screen. And then basically they'll, they'll, they'll allow it. You know, it's like, which, you know, which is just a pointless phone call because everything you had in there was correct. And you're now you're on you know, hold basically for 10 minutes. So it, sometimes it can be a pain in the ass for the retailer. If, if you're a really busy uh, bait shop and you've got people lined up trying to get shrimp and chum and we get line on your reel, you know, it's 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 good during season because it draws people in. But, you know, then it's going to really suck when you get somebody, four people visiting from Czechoslovakia, and they give you a passport, and, and you, it's like higher, what do they call it, hieroglyphics or something. You can't even read it. You know, they don't speak English. You know, a lot of foreign countries don't use zip codes. They use postal codes. But everything on it, like, this, it's not like, you know, 123 Main Street. It's got all this gibberish and all this language on there. Sometimes they'll put the city for, you know, it's all jacked up. It's way different than the way we do it in the United States. I'm not saying ours is right and yours is wrong, but when you're used to one method, then that's what you're going to incur. So, um, <clears throat> so you know, it, it gets difficult when people can't speak the language. But for the most part, you know, it's it's not that bad. It's sometimes, you, you know, if, if you have a little bit of personality, you can start talking to people, simmer them down. <clears throat> and then, oh, here's the other thing. This is crazy. This is a true story. The um, it's weird. Like you'll the, the initial prompts, it'll ask you. Um, I think it's your last name or something. I forget what it is. And then after that, they'll ask you the last four digits of your social security number. Then it clicks over to the next screen. Then it gets real detailed where they're asking you. You know your first name, middle name, last name, da -da 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 -da, all this stuff. Then they want your whole social security number. 
like which you know everybody's been taught with you know privacy and protection laws and everything you really shouldn't give that out but this is you know it's supposed to be okay when you know the state or the federal government's doing it but so anyway um so some people do get you know upset and they don't want to give out their full social security number which is understandable but there's no way to bypass it so if you want the fishing license that's kind of what you got to do <clears throat> unless you want to call them and just go through the same argument with them because there is no exemption for that but um so one time years ago this guy came in kind of like a construction worker type dude and i don't know if he was having a bad day or what but he uh you know i was being real polite to the guy and i went through the first step i was just telling you about and then i asked him you know i was said you know this is what the state of florida requires and they want to know your social security number and the guy just f-bombs me up and down and tells basically you know pack sam and he didn't use those exact words but he's going on and on and on and then guy the guy was like literally having like a temper tantrum and he thought like you know i had a magic wand where i could just you know sprinkle fairy dust and everything's going to be okay for him and he's going to get what he wants because he had a little temper tantrum so i was working with an older guy at the time and <clears throat> he he came over and at that point i had had it with this guy so i went from being polite to like hey dude pack sand get the hell out of here and it wasn't the vocabulary i used but so we 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 got into a verbal altercation and i almost turned physical but the one thing it made me feel good just to you know make this guy feel like an idiot it's like dude you can bitch all you want I, I said i've got my fishing license i'm legal so you have a nice have a nice day you know so he cursed some more he finally left and he, you know <clears throat> he didn't get what he wanted but like i said uh, know your legal limits get your license you know no size limits there's a thing in florida sometimes for certain species called a slot limit so like i'm gonna use this piece of wood here as an example um like on a snook fish on this coast of Florida, last time I checked, I need to double check, I think it's still the same. The minimum length on a, a snook is 28 inches. So from 28 inches to 33 inches, if you have a fish that overall length is within that, and I, that, that, that five inch slot, and I think, I'm pretty sure it measures from the tail, I, I gotta double check. But um, you, you can keep that fish, but if it's over or under, you can't keep that, and, and it's a major penalty. But so there are things called slot limits, so you, you kind of need to be aware of that. But so I, I'm done rambling. That's the basics on some of the fish licenses. You know, you'll you'll uh, kind of need to know about. They have uh, different exemptions. Some people like there's certain types of military thing. If you're on um, like disability or government assistance like food stamps or something like that um, you know you can be exempt I, you know I'm not gonna don't go out there based on my word but I do recommend you get the magazine read all the fine print because there's different things <clears throat> if you're you know a child you know under 16 you do not need a license whether you're in state or out of state whatever so kids under 16 do not need a fishing license so then there's, like I said, once once you turn 65 and you're a Florida resident, you are exempt. So any of the additional um, privileges like snook stamp or whatever, if, if you're, if you meet the qualifications to be exempt for your Florida fishing license as a, you know, you're now considered by the state of Florida senior citizen, you don't need to have to pay any additional um, extended privileges like snook stamp or anything like that but so i i hope this kind of surmised you know a little bit telling you about what to expect when you come here to fish in florida um you know anyway i'm done jabbering you know your legal limits folks <laughs>